want to know who it was because uh, no. But I think um, over the years, I'm very grateful for some of the trainings and the lessons that I've, I did personally, like personal growth and development. Because honestly speaking, I do not think if I if I was just by myself and I had not gone through such mind reprogramming trainings, I don't think I would be sane. Like literally, I would have re literally run mad because yeah. so many things will test you. Huh. You know, Lagos is particularly a pressure state, not just because of the the life, you know, and all of that. It's also even because of just like literally saying you just want to go about your daily business. Hmm. It's a lot of stress. You have to deal with so many things. And um, so, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm grateful enough that I went through a process earlier on in life. So now it's easier to manage some of the pressures. And I think um, to, to some extent I'm doing good, you know, but, but you see that madness. <laughs> it's a very essential thing to so have. So it comes Lagos. out. <laughs> but before it comes out, you know that you have done something. Yeah. So there's some touch points for me. There are some triggers. Like things that have to do with my children. Things that, Like if you touch some areas mm -hmm. in my life. Oh my God. I know all that. Uh, that's uh, all the training gone in the mud. <laughs> <Yeah. That's laughs> said, for, for you to be able to survive as quickly in this Lagos, you need to have. No, you, you need have to know how to switch from, hello, what you're doing, to. You did Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... Yeah, no. She's very weary. <laughs> but these days, it's, it's even harder to, to actually be free. Except when it's very extreme. Mm, right. Because, yeah, like, if... It's like you're even weak to you. Like, who will I start from now? Actually, <laughs> I agree. These days, there's no energy. So you just like, yeah. just go. <laughs> I'm just telling cool. you. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me start with you, Mary. What did you find for us in today's news? Mm, okay. You have to put out a disclaimer first. <laughs> that. <laughs> so, Davido and his beautiful wife, Shelma, mm -hmm. have been claimed that they reportedly welcome a set of twins in the U.S. And um, Davido posted a tweet that said we thank god so um there's no official statement out yet but we are proclaiming the good news that um they they've welcomed a set of twins a boy and a girl and we're saying congratulations to them and mm. wishing happy, them all the best honestly, so happy. do we know the sexes here like boy yeah, they girl. said one boy one, okay, one boy one girl oh yeah. nice so, that's 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 sweet double blessing you know, you know how they say it's sweet. Yeah. That's the sweet thing. <laughs> I'm so happy Wishing for them. Wishing them all the best. If I'm it's very, true, like if it's true, congratulations. Happy. Yes, I'm happy congratulations. for them. Well, okay. So what I found in the news is, I think like the news I took yesterday. To me, it's a good news. Hopefully, they see this one too. So, um, Lagos State Police Command declares popular Nigerian punta killer boy wanted months after he confessed to killing his girlfriend on social media. In a series of posts shared with his Twitter handle on July 17, Killer Boy claimed he mistakenly stabbed his girlfriend after they got into an argument. She was reportedly missing for days until her mother went to Killer Boy's house at Oral Estate in the Kota area of Lagos State to look for her. Prior to Augusta, prior to Augusta missing, her mother had tried to reconcile her and her boyfriend over an issue they had. Killer Boy, who, tried, who cried about messing up his life at 26 in Insta story post he shared, promised to ensure that his late girlfriend gets justice as he can't live with the guilt. He, however, disclosed that he ran away after killing her out of fear. He has been hiding ever since then. The police have now declared him wanted. I'm very happy about this particular story because, I mean, when, when he was out there, he just, all of a sudden, we just started seeing Insta story saying, oh, I regret what I did. I killed my girlfriend, blah, 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 blah. It was a mistake. It was, I'm like, how do you mistakenly kill someone, first of all? Someone who you claim is your girlfriend, who I believe that you guys were in love, right? How do you mistakenly kill her because you guys were having an argument? Arguments are normal in relationships. And when I say relationships, not necessarily intimate relationships. Even in friendships, arguments are a normal part of life. But then, so because you're arguing with someone, does it not necessarily mean you kill the person? And the worst part was, it took people on Twitter dragging the entire Nigerian police force 
to actually declare this guy wanted. Because for the longest, imagine since July, we are in October and they're just declaring him wanted. It's so ridiculous. Someone who came out on his own page to like write that he killed somebody. Like, I don't see why we are wasting time in trying to har arrest such a person. But I mean, where we are at right now, I'm grateful that at least he's been declared wanted. My prayer is that they actually find him because according to the mother, she said that he left the country just immediately after he killed her. That's so, that's crazy. Like, was he prepared for... So it means that it was a, it was a very thought-through plan. It was, it was premeditated. It was not something that just happened because it wanted to happen or because of a mistake, as, according to him. It was a very premeditated plan because how do you kill someone and then the very next minute you are out of the country? I don't, I mean... So, yeah, although the story still, in my opinion, the story still seems a bit shady... It feels like we don't have full details of what exactly went down because I remember that when this when this thing first happened, there was also a gist about um, he was the one sponsoring the girl X Y Z X Y Z. So maybe the parents were even in the know that the guy used to beat her, something like that. But they did nothing because I mean <laughs> because of the money and whatnot. So I mean we really don't know what the true story is. But we pray that they actually find him now that he's been declared. Wait, so is, is, is his name Killer Boy? Well, that's or his they, handle. That's, that's his Instagram so handle. Wait, wait, they don't know his real name. They don't know. I don't think anybody knows his real name. Well, I don't know. I've not heard or seen his real name before, but I know that that's his, um, wait, that wait, his Instagram handle. How can handle, somebody Twitter handle? give their same name? Killer, Killer Boy. Boy. And he has actually me? killed now. Hey. So, Mate, I mean, we need to be careful what we call ourselves, though, honestly. <laughs> and in, 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 in this case, right, it's actually sad. Because the fact that he even said all of those things, mm. you see, you see where I have a grouse with our leaders sometimes. This one, oh, the one that announced himself and said, "See what I did." Mm. You did not touch. It is people that you that will go and post comment that you go and arrest somebody because somebody posted. Uh -huh. Come on, uh -huh. it doesn't mm. make any sense. I hope they are able to find him, and, and I think they so. can do something really with so. Interpol. I mean, a partnership yeah, with Interpol yeah. to be able to, to get him. Yeah, they should be able I, to get I, him. I, 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 I pray like so. him now. But then yeah. finding his real name self is the first thing. No, I believe that... they tell Interpol, killer boy. I actually believe that they can't find his real name. I, I know that. I feel what that... What have they found it? Mary, before their real name is out there somewhere. Really. Let me explain something to you. Nigerian police, if they want to find you... They will find you. You know, get where you get for this country. The Nigerian police hmm. will find you. Nigerian police are actually they very work, trained, though. They, they know the work, very people. trained. They can but get they you, fish you out. To. So if they are not fishing you out, it's because they chose not to, not yes. because they do not know how to. Yes. I, 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 I'm telling you based on experience. I agree. <laughs> so I agree. if the Nigerian police want to work their way up, yes. and they can get him. I agree. Uh. All right, so my story is actually quite interesting because it's, this one is, is, is touching us personally. It says the Worry Zonal Office of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority on Tuesday had sealed petrol stations, uh, retail outlets, and an illegal gas filling plant in um, some local government area in, in Delta State. So according to this um, story, the Zonal Head of Operations, uh, Chukura, led a surveillance team of regulatory authorities to seal the um, airing stations over offenses bordering on under dispensing and lack of operational licenses amongst others and the defaulters of course they mentioned their names he says while he was addressing the journalists at the end of the surveillance exercise noted that one of the mandates of the regulatory agency was to ensure that the masses were not shortcharged or shortchanged by the marketers he said the purpose of the exercise is to ensure customers or consumers get value for their money most of the petrol stations we visited we're selling without operational licenses. We have to shut down and um, the stations and invite owners to our office. So I, I took the story in particular because, I mean, like, some of these uh, fuel attendants are actually very wicked. Like, yes. they are from the pit of hell. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that because, like, literally, I was getting fuel. Already my tank will consume, like, if I am, like, maybe at the last, um, what's it called now, the last quota to go. If I fill up my tank, full tank, it's 45,000 naira. So I told this guy, I said, fill up. And the guy now sells 5,000. And he was now coming with the ATM. I said, I didn't tell you to sell 5,000. He said, what? He said, no, ma, I had 5,000. I said, fill up. I didn't say 5,000. So he thought, and thankfully my son and I were in the car. So he thought we were not watching. He would have just charged you for 5,000 naira for 5, Just the wait naira. now. He now, no, it's not even that, Seth. That's not even the point. So he now, how, how can he do it? No, wait, now, 
He now went and and con continued selling from the from, from the, the five thousand. Yeah, he didn't clear. He, he didn't clear. He continued selling. Then it was getting to like forty thousand because that day the tank was not that um, low. So I said, I think, it, and it was already full. And I now told him to stop at forty thousand. You know what he said? Okay, so now he wanted to punch forty five thousand. I said, how? I don't understand. He said, no, that that five thousand that he thinks said. I said, how? Yeah. <laughs> Thing. Literally, I said, ha no, literally, he was going to do that. No. My son just looked at him and said, my uh -uh, guy. So he saw that we were not even in the mood. Hmm. Do you understand? Like, how? You were selling something. He now came, so he was saying, that, no, that, that thing cleared, that the way the machine works. I say, you, wow. that I know, all these uh, attendants. So the reason I'm saying this is that even outside of the, the, the uh, what's it called? The we it's wickedness. Already the fuel is expensive. Yeah. Some of these fuel stations, if you if you dispense a thousand, um, sorry, a hundred liters, you would see some shortages. If you use um, measured, maybe like kegs or something, mm -hmm. so and you dispense like one liter, your one liter might not be complete already. Do you understand? Your one liter might not be complete already. Then you now double it with the the kind of impunity that happens amongst uh, fuel attendants. So you have to really be very vigilant when you are getting fuel. Because as it stands now, everybody's just looking for a way. And in the end, it is us, the end users, that are suffering. So a lot of people now, they'll go and buy 20 liter kegs. And they end up going home with maybe like 17 liters. They're mm. three liters short mm. from the dispensing pump. So that's part particularly why some of these fuel stations are being sealed. And I think they should do more of these exercises yes, and seal it. Because yes. we're already buying expensive fuel. So the best you can do for us is at least so sell to my it. last liter, you know. <laughs> Sell it to my last liter. So people should just be vigilant because they are actually out, you know, they're out for blood. <laughs> All right, so we'll take a break now. When we come back from that break, let's discuss mental health. In fact, this poem matter is part of my mental health. <laughs> <laughs>